Hello everybody, this is Jason Giaffo with Giaffo Designs. Um, in this video, I'm going to be doing a, a remake of a phaser workflow video I made last year. Um, I think we were in version 2020 at the time. We are currently on version 2250. Um, I've had quite a few gigs now of, of time to, to actually get to really work with this and figure out what needed to be streamlined and tweaked and, and adjusted um, and kind of the best ways to get the data flexibility that I am looking for uh, in a way that also isn't stupidly cumbersome. Um, and I think I've gotten it pretty streamlined at this point. I feel I feel like I'm faster at building phasers on the three than I was at building effects on the two, which is huge. Um, but as with all things that are worthwhile on the three. Uh, it does include the use of some plugins to make that streamlining happen. Um, the plugins involved are something that I'm selling for 15 bucks. Um, be aware that everything that I will show in this series of videos um, can be done by macro. Uh, some of the things I'm using plugins for are just streamlining uh, how to manipulate data and makes it a little bit faster or a little bit more precise to tweak exactly what I'm looking for but it can all be done with macros. So if you don't feel like it is worth the the couple bucks for the information and for having the plugins there, you can still make use out of this video set um, if this workflow seems like it's something that would make sense for you. Um, that plugin is referenced within the macros that you'll see in use here. So the phaser extract, phaser ingest, I'll explain what those mean, but you'll see that there are uh, Lua of plugin calls uh, within those. The plugin installs the macros, installs the appearances needed to make all these pieces work. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, this workflow is for the crowd that is programming their Q stacks using values rather than with recipes, meaning that every value in all of your queues are, are not built with recipes, you are using the, the normal store function to get values into some of your queues. Um, for, for the environments that I work in, I, I, a recipe only workflow is not practical for me. Uh, I need to be able to use store queue only. I need to be able to use uh, tracking blocks or tracking breaks. Um, I need to be able to store remove down an entire queue stack and remove an attribute or remove a fixture quickly uh, doing that. So uh, I do understand that there are workflows out there. There are shows out there where a uh, recipe only workflow does make sense. Um, I do not feel like that applies to me. Um, so this is geared towards the other people who don't feel like that is quite the environment uh, for them. So if you are of the, the purest recipe only mindset, um, I would just encourage going ahead and closing this video because it's probably not for you. Um, with that said, uh, I just wanted to give a, a quick workflow of kind of how I'm, oh, sorry, before I jump ahead, um, with, with, with that said, since I'm not using recipes on everything, um, my update process does include cloning and then also the use of the, the MA tools, uh, recipe tools plugin to, uh, copy recipe, basically to clone recipe lines where they're needed. So I can still get the, the full flexibility of being able to use recipes even on, on a cloned show uh, at a festival, um, but not have to build everything with recipes only all the way through everything. Um, so, uh, with that said, um, I'm going to just give a quick demonstration of kind of what this workflow looks like and how I'm able to store into queues with it uh, to give a sense of whether this is kind of the way you want to work. Uh, to me, this is kind of trying to emulate the way that I would be working with sequences on the two software. Uh, so we've got three sets of fixtures down here. We have a set of Mac ones, some what were they're, they're tornadoes. Um, I broke the profiles. They, they work great in real life. Um, pan tilt's broken, so we're just going to treat those as some generic battens and uh, some liras up top, some profiles. So I'm going to make just a, a winged dimmer effect that I want to use on all three of these um, fixture groups. So just to build it as if I was on the show right now, let's say I want to do it with a, a ramp down form. I'm going to apply my matrix and my wings to it. Let's say I want that to move inward. I'm going to 
store that into a preset and convert that preset into uh, a recipe line or a recipe, I don't know, preset. And then I'm going to add in all of my different groups. So I have a different line entry for each group. I'm moving quickly just to show kind of this more of the speed I'd be moving out in a real show. Uh, and with all of that done, I can just double click this guy and I have all of my fixture groups doing that effect. Now, again, I'm able to double click it. First click is select fixtures, second click calls it. So it doesn't matter what selection order of group I've used to grab it. I can just, that, that, that's always how I worked with MA3 effects. If I could just double click the effect and store it into a queue, that is my preference. We'll just call this wings. Um, but now let's say, oh, actually I want that to move out now. Well, all three of these are referencing this top recipe line. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna reverse the phase on that line. And now, actually just gonna turn this on. If I turn this on, we can see that, oh, it's now it's moving the other direction. Or maybe I want four wings, so I can up that wing count to four, and that is up and working. But now let's say I wanna change this from a ramp down to a PWM. All right, well, I'm gonna pull that out. Apparently I did not click on the right things at the right time. And I'm going to pull that into my editor. I'm going to grab my second step. Uh, sorry, so I was gonna do like a PWM, right? So I'm gonna grab both steps, I guess. And we'll set our transition to zero. And I guess I will want to add a little more width to this, uh, actually be the first step to be able to make that make sense. So now I've got my PWM in there. I'll update that preset and I'm good to go. I have now updated the form of that. Um, if I want to tweak the form again, I can go back in there and let's say now I want to add a little bit of a decay trail off of there. Then I'll add some transition. Again, just hit update and my form's updated. And I want to get this information back where it started. So I tuck it back into the preset it started from and that's my workflow. Um, so what is happening there is in I am putting anything in my in the actual preset, which is when I say the preset, it is what generally lives inside of this first recipe line being referenced by the other recipe lines. Um, I'm putting anything in there that cannot be uh, affected by a matrix. So that would include um, phaser measure, I would include step widths, uh, acceleration, deceleration, basically any part of my transition, uh, speed master association, uh, but not phase, not speed. Uh, for those things, I would go in here and I would tweak, actually I would, let's put that back in here. If I wanna tweak speed on here, I would do it from here so I can speed that effect up or slow it way the hell down. Um, so anything that can be modified by matrix, is being kept modified by a matrix. Um, that all lives in a, a single reference uh, recipe line, um, essentially a preset, um, being referenced by the other recipe lines, including the a matrix values. But then if I want to, for example, reverse one of those groups from all the rest, let's say I want the tornadoes to go backwards from the others, that particular line can still have its own uh, a matrix data separate from the others. So now if I exit back out, let's fix our speed. If I exit back out, we can see the tornadoes are moving in their wings out to in while the others are moving into out. Might be easier if I do that with two wings to be able to see that. Um, but again, uh, this kind of treats it, this gives for me the same kind of flexibility that I was getting on the MA2FX engine and that's what I, I love about it is the, the way that I'm able to edit. Um, and the way that I'm able to get as granular as I want, but also make large changes to the whole phaser quickly instead of having to rebuild a whole selective phaser. Um, it does work with uh, selective presets, though there will be a, a video later in the series showing that. So all my circle effects are built, or plyout effects, and uh, anything position related is built with this workflow as well and works in updates without issue. Um, so yeah, if this seems like it is kind of more the way you would like to be working with phasers in the three. Hopefully the rest of these videos kind of help uh, lay out what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, next video we're going to start explaining data structures on the three so that as I am tweaking and explaining things, uh, the reasoning for all of that might make some sense.